Next caller is Hannah from Wisconsin. Hi, Hannah. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, So I'm currently 28 weeks pregnant and just thinking about um, after I have the baby, um, reintroducing exercise and continuing to strengthen the pelvic floor. Okay. So um, congratulations, by the way. It's your first. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Congratulations. Okay. Training right now? Hannah. Yeah, I'm currently on a pretty consistent exercise plan. Are you are you following a MAPS program or are you following something else? Um, not really right now. I've done MAPS anabolic, but then I started doing more like body weight and just lighter weight exercises. Some stuff that I learned from MAPS anabolic, but not super specific to that. Okay, that's good. Um, if you don't, do you have MAP starter? Because if you don't, I think that would be a, a perfect program to do now um, and then postpartum as well. Do you have that? No, I don't. Okay, well you do now, so Doug's going to send that over to you. Okay, so a couple a couple things about, um, or I have a few things to talk about uh, with your question. So number one, a, uh, the, a lot of the pelvic floor muscle uh, issues that happen or damage that happens uh, oftentimes has to do with the child birth process, the delivery process itself. So if you haven't already, I would look into um, how to give birth while you know relaxing the muscles of the pelvic floor and allowing the baby to come out. Oftentimes, and I learned this recently uh, through taking classes with my wife, a lot of times when women are tight and tense, and they're told to push. This is where some of the damage yeah. in those muscles happen. So that's very important. It is very important to avoid uh, damaging that area or those muscles uh, during the child delivery process. So that's number one. Uh, now, number yeah. two, number two, postpartum. And by the way, mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of the best resources, in my experience, are from the natural childbirth uh, uh, resources. So look at. Um, doulas and midwives that do natural childbirth. Not that you're doing that that way necessarily, but they're experts at successful, um, you know, deliveries uh, that that result in the, the minimal um, types of injuries. So I would I would look at those uh, resources. But now postpartum, um, you you want to practice as soon as you get clearance. You would do want to practice strengthening the muscles that uh, it's very similar to stopping urine flow. It's called a Kegel. So I'm sure you've heard of these before. Uh, but you mm-hmm. you can practice these throughout the day um, and hold and squeeze those muscles. It's a very basic, simple exercise. And then um, you know other exercises you're probably already familiar with, like squats, actually help strengthen the pelvic floor, especially when you're controlling those muscles as you get to the bottom of a squat. Um, you could try exercises like uh, bird dog. That's another exercise that you could do for the pelvic floor. Um, the key is, uh, obviously how strong are you going into childbirth, how the childbirth happens, and then are you, uh, able to do exercises, uh, postpartum? So I, I love, I love map starter here because it does cover most of these exercises that I was having Katrina doing, but I did have a few things that I did that were kind of like custom to what I wanted her to do. Right. So, um, I had her do walking lunges and when she would do walking lunges, I'd have her like stabilize on one leg every time so she'd be she'd lunge balance lunge balance and when she'd balance i'd actually ask her to to tuck her tailbone so engage her glutes and tuck her tailbone same same movement as you would do if you were doing like a floor bridge so mm-hmm. uh, a walking lunge uh with just her body weight with that movement and the focus is and control is on the stability portion and then being able to kind of squeeze her glutes and tuck her tailbone so that was an exercise that i added that isn't into the routine or i modified i should say uh, another thing that i had her do um that i i thought she got a lot of benefit from is a turkish get up um, and we started uh, with just her body weight at first. You know, she, I didn't need her to load it. I just wanted her to perform the mechanics of that exercise. And at, at each portion of it, it's basically broken up in eight steps. Her really emphasize each step and control her body through. And then we slowly uh, started to load it. And then the other thing was like her her floor bridges. I think floor bridges. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I did a video uh, on YouTube. Uh, a long time ago, but you could look it up. Uh, and I think it has to do, I forget the name of the, the, the video, Doug, you know, which one it was, it was the glute activation or it's one of our top videos that you see me teach a proper floor bridge. I think, uh, the mistake that a lot of people make when they make the floor bridge is they don't activate their core, mm-hmm. uh, before they go up into it. 
Um, and so I think that portion of the floor bridge is so important, even though it's such a small right. movement. Check of, your tailbone first. Yeah, get pre- that yeah. I teach you to press your back against the the ground first, activate the glutes, and then come up into the bridge. Um, that's all strengthening that, that those pelvic floor muscles. I added those to her routine, and then I would say those those exercises in with starter, I think, is a great one. And to Adam's point, too, with how he added that balance element with the lunges, you can also do with the floor bridges by just coming up with one leg. Uh, and really, too, with the bird dogs, the same thing. This is all anti-rotation, so we're trying to uh, make sure that we regain that that stability and that control there in the hips. So anytime it feels like it's about to turn on you, you're correcting that and you're stabilizing the entire uh, pelvic girdle. Okay. Yeah, that's very helpful. So start map, starter now, and then just resume that once I'm cleared for exercise. Yes. Yep. Plus, yes, plus exactly. Plus. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for calling in, Hannah. Excellent. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it's what you do uh, before and during pregnancy is so important. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's so much focus is placed on what you do after that the setup is uh, oftentimes ignored, I think. Well, we also didn't mention something to that, I think, because like, you talked about like the importance of all this beforehand, right? So you don't tear anything when mm-hmm. you go into actual pregnancy. I think the other challenge is if you already have a, a poor connection to your pelvic floor muscles because you don't train them and you don't strengthen them, right? You don't work on that connection. And then you take the drugs when you're in pregnancy because it's extremely painful and hard to get through in the first place. Then it numbs that area even more. So talk about making it even harder to connect to that. That's why it's even more important for the strength. So you have a very good connection to that area. So if you end up having to use any drugs in this case and you're numb, you still have the ability to connect there because you've practiced it so much where if you take a mother who hasn't been training, hasn't focused on the pelvic floor at all, then she goes into pregnancy and she takes the drugs right. because it's really, really rough. Then she, it's really tough to ask her to be able to connect to those muscles. Impossible. Yeah. It's like uh, totally impossible. Yeah, and you know, it's, it, and again, it's just, just, I learned this uh, while Jessica was pregnant, you know, when you're tense or tight, you naturally tighten up uh, those muscles. And telling a, a mom to push while she's, you know, right. uh, maybe unconsciously, not mm-hmm. like willingly, but just doing it because she's she's scared or she's told to push or whatever. Tightening those muscles, you are pushing through these muscles that are contracting and tight. You are going to cause uh, problems. And so, there's a lot of skill and technique that's involved in learning how to relax while you push and and this makes a a huge difference 